All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to be doing part six to the extremely popular series titled Wife Thought I Agreed to Open Marriage. Instead, I took her car, credit cards, and kicked her out. And guys, this is following up to last night's part five, where I left off where you're hearing all about the dirty deeds of this guy's ex-wife's past, soon to be ex-wife. He, he, her old co-worker and confident was spilling the beans on everything about her. And this guy, as hard as it was to hear, learned everything about her that was going on with her affair with her boss, things that she was doing in college, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Her attitude towards him that, hey, he could find out about me cheating. I would give him the whole waterworks and he would forgive me and be back to business as usual. Everything. Once again, show how much of a despicable piece of crap that she is. And thank the Lord, he's kicked her to the curb. So we're going to pick up. I don't need to say anything else. Because it's a long story, and we're going to wrap this up. And this guy says this will be his final update. But I have a feeling there'll be more. And I do think, because I know he's getting divorced, it's supposed to be finalized in July. So I do think we'll hear more down the road about how everything was finalized. Because I'm sure there'll be the final waterworks with her in July, right before they sign the papers and he's free of her. But anyhow, on to part six here. And you're going to hear more details about his uh, evil, harpy, piece of crap wife. He continues, he says here, I asked Claire, remember Claire is the co former co-worker of Cheryl, Carousel Cheryl. I asked Claire about Jim. Jim's her former boss. Claire said that Cheryl was very brazen about her affair in the office, which Jim did not like. It was like she was telling everyone that she owned him. If you mess with her, you mess with the boss too. After work, Cheryl and Jim would walk out with the group, but, but, but leave by themselves instead of going drinking with them. Tell them they would meet up with them later. They never did. They went to a hotel nearby. Cheryl had asked Claire to say she, to, to say Cheryl was always with her. Claire after work, <clears throat> if anyone me ever asked about it. Uh, how long did this go on? Apparently for months. Almost as soon as Cheryl started working there, and until Jim's wife found out right before Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas! Your husband's uh, having an affair with one of his uh, employees. I asked about how his wife found out. Claire said she didn't know, but both Jim and his wife wanted to stay in the marriage. They are still married today. She wasn't sure if Jim's wife knew it was Cheryl, but it didn't really matter. If she made a stink about it at work, Jim would have been fired. So instead of just having a cheating husband, she'd have a cheating unemployed husband, so she kept her mouth shut. So, of course, this guy's married to a woman who's still going to stay with him in spite of getting fired. But then again, maybe she, instead of getting divorced, but maybe she figured, hey, I'll just use this asshole for his money. Uh, Claire stopped, told me she was sorry, but uh, that I, I would find Cheryl's answer hurtful. I told her to go ahead with the story. Cheryl said that she was taking a chance being with Jim, but not a big one. She told Claire that I loved her. Cheryl so much that even if I had proof, just not suspicions, I would forgive her. I'd be weepy and sad, and she'd have to spend weeks explaining, making promises, and apologizing, all which would be a huge pain in the ass, but eventually I'd forgive her. Our marriage would go on as it was. Cheryl said I was terrified of losing her, so I'd eventually forgive anything she did. Besides, she was very careful. When his wife find out, found out, Jim told Cheryl they were done. He wanted to keep his marriage and his job. Cheryl was devastated when Jim stopped the affair, and Claire was there for Cheryl to vent to. Aw, oh, poor Cheryl, that poor little dear. They had lunch, and Cheryl told Claire that she thought Jim would give, give her a better job. Claire asked if that, that's why she'd been sleeping with him. She said that was part of it, but the SCX was really good, and the adventure was exciting. A reason to get out of bed in the morning. She really missed their time together. Maybe when his wife calmed down, they'd start again. Sounds like these two are perfect for each other. I asked Claire why Jim didn't get Cheryl a promotion. She said Jim was an idiot for being with Cheryl, wasn't stupid enough to promote her. Everyone in the office knew she was sleeping with him. And at best, she was a mediocre employee. The only thing she did well was show up for work, at least as long as the affair was going on. If he had given her a better job, there would have been a rebellion at the office and HR, which is already sniffing around and would have been told about the affair. I asked her what she meant when Cheryl showed up for work as long as the affair was going on. She said about a month after the affair with Jim was over, maybe late February or early March, Cheryl started coming in late, sometimes show up after lunch. Other times she'd disappear after lunch. This would happen every day or so and every week, but her late arrivals and early departures would come in brunt in bunches. So every two to three weeks, she showed up for work only half a day, mornings or afternoons, two to three days in a row, and she was out, for, out sick a lot. Eventually, Jim called her into his office and wanted them to I watched them through, and I watched them through the office window. 
He was calm, but she was agitated by their discussion. When she left the office, I asked what was up. I wondered if she'd been fired. She told me that at lunch, at lunch, so not fired. So she's rebelling because he's no longer seeing her and trying to get his attention. And this is probably the real reason she left work and wanted to go back to school. At lunch, she said that Jim told her she was taking too much time off. She shouldn't rely on their friendship to take advantage of him. His bosses noticed her absences and weren't happy about her attendance or her work output. He was getting heat over it. She had to do better. Cheryl asked him what he was going to do about it, fire her. He was her boss, and she could tell HR that he coerced her into an affair. There you go. Now I got power over you, a-hole. We were hooking up. You stopped hooking up with me. If you uh, give me a hard time about coming in late or whatever, I'm going to tell HR that you were harassing me and blah, blah, blah. You hear right here, guys. This is why you never have relations with anybody you work with, ever. The job is for making, earning a paycheck or building your career, nothing more. It's a pretty girl in your office you like, you get along with, great. She leaves the job and no longer work for the same company or you leave, then you can date her. Other than that, no fucking way. But you know what? He deserves any potential shit that comes from this. It wouldn't be hard to prove the affair. Everybody knew. He'd be fired immediately. She probably would, would keep her job since she was the victim. Regardless, his job was more important to him than her job was to her. Jim told her that she had to get her act together. If he was fired because she went to HR or for any reason resulting from her behavior, he would go right to me and tell me all the details of their affair. He'd be without a job, but he'd make sure that she'd be without a husband. Cheryl told Jim to go F himself. But Cheryl told Claire that she didn't want to lose her marriage. So she decided to make more of an effort at work. <clears throat> Jim also wanted to know if she was seeing a doctor. Did she have an STD? She said she didn't know she had an STD, but if she did, she would have gotten it from him. Jim said that she, she was the only one he'd been with besides his wife. Cheryl told him to ask his wife who she'd been with. Uh, she laughed when she said that was that told Claire that. She thought that was hysterical. I don't see the humor. Um, how I, Clearly, this guy's wife got the STD as well. I told Claire that Cheryl was sick maybe twice in all the years I've known her. Did her meeting with Jim change her behavior? Did she get in and leave on time? Claire said Cheryl toned it down. No more getting in after lunch or leaving at lunch. But she left early from work in the same pattern as before. Every few weeks, two to three days in a row. No longer right after lunch. She disappeared maybe an hour or two early. I asked Claire when Cheryl was uh, called into Jim's office. Claire thought it must have been around April of 2017. I remember that Cheryl started working late again that April and in the same pattern that Claire described. She'd get home late every few days for a few days in a row. Sometimes she'd get home as late as 10 p.m. When I asked her about it, she said they were given projects and deadlines. Everyone put off doing the work until the last minute, so they had to work late to meet the deadline. Cheryl never, Cheryl never came home disheveled or smelling of alcohol. So, what was going on now? Claire said they never stayed late at work because of any project. Claire was uh, a part of some of the projects with Claire and Jim always wanted projects done before the deadline so he could review their work. He kept track of how far along they were in the project, uh, what people, what they were doing, if they were behind, and he cracked the whip. They always delivered the projects early. What did Claire think was going on? Claire told me that Cheryl had stopped confiding in her about her extracurricular activities after the Christmas party, didn't trust her anymore. But they remained friendly, still talked, and had lunch together. There are still lots of college stories to hear. Frenemies. <coughs> and you have no idea what she was up to, I asked. Claire said Cheryl started talking about Roy. After the affair with Jim was over, she mentioned him more and more frequently. She said he didn't live in our town but had business relationship with the university and would come to town every few weeks to meet people at the university. He'd stay for days and then go back home. There you go. Now, now you know why for a few days she'd leave early or be out late and all that. Claire asked Cheryl about how she knew about this, what this Roy was doing. She said they always kept in touch. She never told me that she was seeing him, but she was always happy and excited, bubbly even, uh, before and after those days when she would sn sneak out early. Claire said she finally asked Cheryl if she was hooking up with Roy. Claire said Cheryl didn't say anything but smiled with her big smile and winked at Claire. 
So you think they were meeting up when she left work early? Claire sighed and just said, yes. Wouldn't it surprise me? It wouldn't surprise me. Does it surprise you? No, not anymore. Yeah, this is a story I'm not going to ever forget. Of course, because it's six parts. I didn't say anything. Good old Roy, her ex-boyfriend from high school and college, had shown up after Cheryl went home to her parents last December to comfort poor Cheryl in her time in distress. I wonder if Cheryl called him to tell him she needed him, wanted him, so he showed up. I wonder if Roy bumping into Cheryl's father was staged and if Roy was really there to help his parents move. Uh, Their evening walks were obviously just hookups. I'm guessing that as Cheryl progressed in her healing, she was able to spend more and more time alone with Roy. Well, from the, the, the video a few videos ago, I said when she was meeting Roy going for those walks because the dad was telling him, like, oh, she's sucking him off in the bushes. And this is before I knew that she was actually having a thing going on with him for years. Things get pretty predictable after a while, guys. I wonder why Cheryl never told me that she was keeping in touch with Roy all these years. But not my problem anymore. I don't really care. Well, she wouldn't tell you that because she didn't want you to be suspicious. Roy was always her... Uh, you were her rock that she sadly milked for everything that's worth, but Roy was always her guide, her fallback guide for hookups and all that. I asked her what happened between you and Cheryl at the Christmas party in the bathroom. She told me she always liked listening to Cheryl describe her encounters with Jim and from her college days. What I tell you about women loving drama, all women love drama. Even if they're not in the drama, they want to hear about the drama. Right here. She didn't encourage the affair other than by listening to her about it, laughing at her anecdotes and asking her questions, especially about Jim's anatomy and what Jim was willing to do. What I tell you guys always, I don't care what your situation is, guys, all girls talk. So if you relationship guys out there right now, I guarantee you your girlfriend's best friend or one of her best friends knows the size of your you-know-what, knows how you are in bed, knows what your favorite positions are, knows what you're not good at, knows how long you last, whether it's long or whether it's short, guarantee relationship guys, even you marry guys, your wife's BFF, some girl knows all the details about you. Just just mentioning that right here. <clears throat> uh, she sort of agreed with Cheryl that if no one found out, why not have some fun with a lover? Claire never asked if Cheryl thought she was acting inappropriately, and Claire didn't offer any opinions. Claire said she didn't know me. It was just a name without a face to her. She knew Cheryl and Jim, and they appeared happy with what they were doing. Yeah, well, you know what? This woman knew she was had a husband who was cheating, and but didn't care as long as she was getting her, her stories and gossip and all that. So this, this girl's a piece of shit, too, but she's a useful idiot, so you can get all the information out of her. Claire said her sentiments changed when she met me at the Christmas party. I seem like a nice guy who really loved my wife. I didn't deserve this treatment. She was furious with Cheryl. How could she parade you in front of her co-workers who all knew that your wife had been sleeping with another man behind your back? Because she's a sociopath. That's why. The only person in the room who didn't know about Cheryl and Jim was you. You were like a court jester she brought there for everyone's amusement. Oh, well, that's real nice to hear. Only you didn't know what they were amused about. How could she humiliate you more? This clueless man, her husband, who loved her and thought she was his loving, faithful wife, would be the brunt of jokes for days by pretty much everyone there. And Cheryl knew that, just didn't care. She was there showing how much power she had over you, her poor, clueless husband whom she had wrapped around her finger. You may not have known what was going on, but everybody else did. She was disgusted with Cheryl. Okay, this is obviously why things faded with them afterwards, but regardless... Or what, she just saw this husband there and all of a sudden she just gr- had a conscience. Jiminy Cricket popped up on her shoulder and she saw the light. I'm not buying it. <coughs> he says, I don't believe anything Claire said about her sympathy for me or her disgust with Cheryl. Good, I'm glad you're not buying it all, ma'am. Uh-uh. When I asked her about Jim at the party, Claire thought seriously about telling me outright that my wife was a cheat and she really didn't care about me had been Jim's lover and that had been going on for months. Then we'd see who had the power and who was being laughed at. Claire thought maybe Cheryl would be so embarrassed in front of all these co-workers that she'd have to quit her job. Yeah, and then Claire could go after Jim. Hopefully you'd smack her in the head or drag her by her hair out of the party and then divorce her. Cheryl would have gotten her just rewards. But Claire says she thought better of telling me directly. Instead, she'd give me hints about who the other woman was. She just wanted her fucking drama, just like hearing the drama from Cheryl. She'd provide me 
with enough hints to make me suspicious. I would start asking questions and find out. She did everything she could to, to think of to see if I could guess who she was talking about without telling me directly. He says, uh, what did Cheryl and Claire talk about in the bathroom? Cheryl was really angry at Claire. After she dragged Claire into the bathroom, she asked Claire what she thought she was doing. Claire said she fired right back. What did Cheryl think she was doing? How could she humiliate me like this, parading me around in, front of, in a group of people, and they could laugh at me? Couldn't Cheryl have skipped the party instead of subjecting me to a bunch of ridicule? Not coming to the party would have been the decent thing to do. Jim was at least decent enough not to subject his wife to this. Scratch that. Jim wasn't at all decent. Jim's wife made that decision for him. Well, guys, at this point, you can clearly see some of the different things to talk about all the time are certainly proving true in the story. I mean, just the list of things about the best friend or the office friend knows everything, the gossip, the drama, knowing what the guy's like in bed, all, all these stereotypes dead on. Cheryl said they weren't laughing at me. Claire told her that they are they, they are and will be. I'll be the brunt of gossip and jokes and pretend sympathy for weeks. The poor idiot, deluded husband, doesn't have a clue. Someone just put him out of his misery. Who do you think is is bigger? Do you think he knows and doesn't care? Too bad Jim and his wife weren't at the party too. That would have been fun. How stupid is he? She could hear their condescending remarks already. They may not have been laughing out loud at me, but they now they, they will be. Now they'll be looking for me like I'm a freak. Claire told Cheryl that she'd been standing near some, uh, near some moron from purchasing when Cheryl and I walked in. He asked his buddies loud enough for everyone nearby to hear. I wonder when Cheryl is going to introduce her, her husband, to Jim. They have so much in common. Maybe they can give each other some pointers. Everyone around him was laughing. Claire ended him, her tirade by telling Cheryl she was a sick woman. So everybody at work knew. Christmas party, they're all knowing that she's hooking up with the boss and looking at this guy. Dude, I'm so sorry to hear this. You've been through so much shit. And again, your ex, soon to be ex-wife, is going to get everything. she She's getting what she deserves and will continue to get what she deserves. But you're free of her. And I don't know how this hasn't messed you up for not just this life, for 10 lifetimes. But it's going to be the greatest comeback in history if you can just move on. And by you moving on and having success, that's the best revenge on her. And never have anything to do with her ever again or talk to her. And this asshole as well. Cheryl responded by saying that she didn't care what anyone thought, including Claire. Cheryl wanted to know what Claire told me. Claire said that I asked if Jim was there. He wanted to meet him. Uh, Claire explained that, that Jim was under house arrest and why. Cheryl wanted to know if Claire said anything about her, Cheryl's involvement. Claire said she didn't tell me specifically that the other woman was lo my loving wife. I asked. Claire said I didn't ask about her, just who the other woman was. Claire said she told me that she knew who the other woman was, that she was at the party with us right now. Claire told Cheryl that she and described the other woman to me. She told Cheryl it was Cheryl... Uh, she described it, de depicted her to a T. Height, hair color, what Cheryl was wearing, everything, but didn't say Cheryl's name. Claire said she described Cheryl to me while we were both looking directly at her. So it was completely clear who Claire was describing, and Claire said, I realized it was Cheryl. So she says she doesn't care what people think, but she doesn't want her meal ticket, her husband, the guy telling the story, to, to be anything damaged, even though she was confident that she could, uh, you know, give give this guy the waterworks if he found out. Still, it could compl complicate her uh, situation. This was all a lie, but Claire said Cheryl deserved it. She wanted to scare the shit out of her. Cheryl was furious. What was the matter with Claire? Was she insane? Cheryl said that she had trusted Claire, thought she was her friend, and she just ruined her marriage. Uh, no, you ruined your marriage with your cheating, you fucking bitch. That's what's going on here. And again, this was her confidant at work because she told all these details to. And the second she got the chance, she was creating drama with the husband here. Doesn't surprise me. Uh, Claire said she told Cheryl that maybe she should forget about her day job and just pursue being a rock and roll star. Cheryl was livid. Claire was afraid she was going to hit her. Cheryl started to go to the bathroom door by saying, Now I have to go to try to save my marriage, you piece of shit. Yeah. She's the piece of shit. I mean, this gal is a piece of shit because she knows all along this girl's cheating with a boss and the boss is married and this gal's married too, but she doesn't care. But notice again, this is two examples of is everybody else's fault than my, uh, but mine and my problem my, about my marriage, blah, blah, blah. Before Cheryl could open the door, <clears throat> Claire grabbed her and told her she didn't really describe Cheryl to me. She made that up. 
Cheryl asked her what she could do, why would she do that. Claire said, in all the time she's known Cheryl, Cheryl never once voiced concern about whether she what she was doing would hurt me. She never once talked about my feelings, just about how she felt and what she wanted and what she was doing. Cheryl considered me a cipher. Now at least Claire got Cheryl to be concerned about me, even though it was only because she thought her marriage was threatened. Claire told Cheryl that she, had been, she hadn't described Cheryl to me, but because of Cheryl's complete disregard for me, she was still tempted to do exactly that. She told Cheryl that she just might, uh, he might just out her to me tonight at the party. Claire told Cheryl that she thought it was I was cute and maybe we'd hook up after, after I got rid of Cheryl. She asked Cheryl if I was good in bed. My loving wife, as, as I said, didn't leave my side for the rest of that night. We never went to another Christmas party at Cheryl's job. Never, say, never saw Claire again. Uh, he says, I don't believe Claire did any of this be, because of any concerns she had about me. She just wanted to have some effing, some fun effing with Cheryl. Yeah, I don't think she was doing it for, for your help either, bro. I think she's a, a drama queen. Likes gossip, turmoil, and all that. And now probably that... Cheryl's gone. Now she could be the queen bee of the office and all that. <clears throat> Not all women are like this, guys, but all women like drama. Whether it's just they hear about it, or they see it on TV, or whatever, to the ones that just full on being in the thick of it. And this gal like being in the thick of it. She could hear about it from Cheryl, but she could be in the thick of it creating it in the workplace. And a perfect example of frenemies and don't trust people at work and on and on. Claire said that Cheryl was angry with her for weeks, but since she didn't have any other female friends, she eventually started treating Claire as if nothing had happened. Claire found Cheryl entertaining and continued to engage with her. Cheryl would still talk to her about, about uh, men. She talked about Roy a lot, and then she wouldn't mention him for a while. <coughs> and then she started talking about him again. And there were other men she thought were cute or sexy or how she, they wanted her. Cheryl was constantly talking about men she met and were attracted to, but never about anything she might have done with them. Claire saw her meet a guy in the lobby of the building once. They looked like they were going for lunch. She didn't know who he was. Cheryl didn't come back to the office after she left with him. Called in saying she had an emergency and wouldn't be returning to the office. But Cheryl never admitted to hooking up with anyone and didn't discuss any affairs with Claire after the Christmas party. Well, I'm not surprised there, but uh, obviously things were going on. And, you know, obviously that, that Claire chick's motive was to stick it to Cheryl. Because everybody, everybody else was sticking it to Cheryl in a different way. But the bottom line is, all sorts of shit was going on for years. College, after graduation, the job. This poor bastard. Uh, says He says here, I said, wait, wait. How would you know that Cheryl said that she had an emergency? How would you know that? How much has she just made? How much did she make up? I wanted to see uh, just how much she was embellishing what she was, she was telling me. She chuckled and said that she knew everything that goes in, uh, in goes on in the office. She remembers that because Marcia, Jim's secretary, had her desk outside Jim's office and could hear him on the phone when the door was open. His eavesdropping female secretary, another stereotype. His calls come through her. She came over to my desk that day and said Cheryl's stepping out on Jim. She called and said that she had an emergency and wouldn't be back today. Hot date emergency. Claire said she remembered because she's stepping out on Jim, not you. Can't anybody just go to a job <clears throat> and do their job, do well, rise in the company, collect their paycheck, and move on? Not all this fucking drama in the workplace. It's unbelievable. That was all Claire had for me. Before hanging up, she asked if I wanted to meet for a drink. I thought it'd be nice, so I told her I wasn't ready for that yet. She said when I was ready, I had her number. We hung up. Yeah, I had her number, just what I needed to have a drink with another Cheryl. This woman encouraged Cheryl in her antics with Jim and was probably doing the same as Cheryl to men in her life. Birds of a feather. Exactly. And I guarantee you this woman would have loved to hook up with you. She probably would have done anything you could have possibly wanted just as revenge on her frenemy. Guarantee. I advise you don't go there, but I'm just telling you right now, that's how it could have gone. Well, now I know Cheryl was never faithful to me. She always had at least one guy she was hooking up with, and she'd probably been hooking up with Roy all the time we were together. As she told Claire, Roy would always be her boyfriend. Her claims that her promiscuity stopped after college was all bullshit. She was probably cheating on me and Bob and Roy, maybe with others too. So I'm done with my story. 
What did I hope to accomplish by writing this besides offering my story through SSM so it might help those with similar problems? I wanted to do two, th- two things. First, I wanted to write down, organize my thoughts, and figure out what was bothering me, other than the obvious about my life with Cheryl. Dude, countless guys have said the same thing. They've shared their stories, and they say it's therapeutic just to write it down, and for many to share on the channel, have guys comment. It really, a lot of guys have told me, it's helped to move on. Guys have shared their story and write back to me six months later saying, SSM, thank you so much for sharing it between you and having it out there and guys commenting. It really helped me move on. So you're not alone, bro. I have read Cheryl's email to Bob probably more times than Cheryl has bumped uglies in her life. I don't know about that. That's a lot of reading. I can never understand why she would write something so horrible. I have done a lot of thinking about it. She didn't write the email for me or about me. I really had nothing to do with it. What was the email about? Cheryl was very manipulative and planned everything out. I believe she really did think that Bob was losing interest in her, plus she wouldn't uh, wouldn't be seeing him regularly, at least for a month. Their affair would not be so active and perhaps would wither away. So, she wanted to keep his interest. How did she do that? Tell him she loved him, couldn't be without him, and they had to figure out a way to keep meeting over the semester break. Two, tell him about her S-word encounters to turn him on. Three, tell him that she had money that she had took from our joint account and there'd be more in the future and she implied that she would share it with him. Four, tell him not to worry about me because she had me wrapped around her finger. Five, tell him he was smart. His idea about telling me she wanted open marriage was a good one. Not so much as that turned out. And six, tell him to figure out how she can get money from me for an apartment where they can meet. That's what she accomplished with her email. When I read that, read about the apartment in her email, my first thought was that Bob would think he'd end up living in that apartment. Cheryl wasn't stupid. She knew Bob would believe the apartment was for him to live in full time. If none of the other incentives worked out to keep him hooked, living in an apartment that someone else was paying for would, in, in infidelity, better than a dorm room. Uh, I didn't think she thought in terms of a long-term relationship with Bob. After all, it was a daytime job. He was the rock and roll. Uh, he said, I was the daytime job. He was the rock and roll. She just needed men to need her and didn't want to lose interest. Can you imagine if this, if this guy, she never asked him for an open marriage and just kept, the whole marriage, they would have been cheating, she would have been cheating on him left and right. Thank God this, these two never had kids. Can you imagine that, guys? Oh, my God. <clears throat> Not that they'd be his children. Anyway, her email handed me enough to confirm infidelity. Why wasn't she more careful about communicating with Bob? She now would never ask to see her phone, and she would never let me see it. That uh, That is unless she did something stupid to ask for an open marriage. She just became so confident that she could do, overconfident that she could get away with things, that she just wasn't thinking straight, you know? And I honestly think a lot of the things she did was, remember I, I tell you guys all the time, women do not respect weak guys. When guys act weak, whether it's actual weakness that we can agree upon as being weak, or as a woman perceives it being weak, they become disgusted by a guy's weakness. And many will punish the guy for it. And worse and worse and worse. And I guarantee in her view, him not being able to see th- who she really was and all these things and treat her so well, even though she's garbage, her interpretation was this guy's weak. And therefore, she wanted to keep punishing him and punishing him and punishing him. And also, it's a big giant game to her. She enjoys, she's just a fucking sociopath and a narcissist. But don't worry. He's getting rid of her. Also, she truly believed that regardless of what I found out, that she could control the situation and, w- and I would never end the marriage. And that's probably the reason she finally gave me her number, her phone instead of just storming out in a huff. She didn't ha- have it to give me her phone or pack her things, the choice I told her she had. She could just left and return later hoping I'd come to my senses and realize I was being controlling. Uh, writing these posts has led me to discover the things I needed to discover about Cheryl when she was working. Even though Cheryl may have exaggerated when describing her S-word encounters to Claire, I knew enough it was true to know who Cheryl truly is. <coughs> uh, writing these posts, I discovered that what was really bothering me was if Cheryl ever told me the truth about anything and ever, if she ever really cared about me at all. Dude, I'm sure I, I get that you're wondering that. Nobody can blame you, but it doesn't matter. She's a fucking sociopath and narcissist. She is incapable of caring about anybody or loving anybody. She sure as hell didn't love you. She doesn't love her parents. Everything is just a big game, and she's she's fucking evil. There there is no love or compassion or anything inside of her at all. She is a fucking sociopath. 
I have my answer to that. She never told me the truth and she never cared about me. It, I was her day job. I knew that on December 12th after reading her email, but I wanted to confirm it so I would never have any doubts ever again. I know for certain that I had lived a fictional life with a fictional wife. A fictional, fictional life with a fictional wife. He says, how was I so duped? How could I be so blind? Dude, don't tear yourself up over this. Plenty of guys before you, and sadly, plenty of guys, plenty of guys after you will make the same mistakes. Guys see and hear what they, they see what they want to see, hear what they want to hear, believe that they're, they're finally they're getting their shot, just like the movie show, that the girl really likes them, or whatever. The girl, and also the a lot of these women are great actresses. So don't beat yourself up too hard of this. You have things to learn, of course, like not rushing into relationships and those other things I mentioned in video number one. But, you know, just unfortunately, lots of guys fall for this shit. <coughs> he says, there, how could I have been so blunt? Cheryl had years of practicing honing her skills as a liar manipulator. Her father and I are very similar men. Yes, I picked up on that. Except her father, who's still not wanting to believe she's as bad as she is, at least you finally saw her for what she is and kicked her out. I have to wonder if uh, the mother cheated on her father left and right. Your ex obviously spent years conning her parents to help develop her skills, as you said. He says here, she learned how to con him and her mother and got better as she got older. They had no idea what she was up, up to while under the, their roof, and neither did I when we were together. Absolutely clueless. She was the same person she was as an adolescent. She didn't go crazy in college. College didn't change her. College just made it easier for her to do what she's been doing for years. Neither her parents nor I was around to inhibit her freedom. This, and he put freedom in quotes. Uh, the second thing I wanted to accomplish was to write all this down to put it behind me. I thought maybe I'd write it down and then burn it. Writing this has been very difficult but necessary for me. I know I'm not just going to walk away from the harm she's done, but I'm more at peace with it than I was last week before starting these posts. At least more peace, more at, of the time. Dude, if taking the time to write all these things down has helped you move forward, that's awesome. It really helps a lot of guys out. And uh, you, you, not to mention all the comments you're going to get from guys all over the world that have your back that are literally counting the minutes till the next post comes out and they can watch it or listen to it in their car. And they'll comment and give you tips and suggestions, things I can't think of. I can't, I can't think of everything when I'm reading these things. I, I can think of a lot, but they can all help. Different perspectives from dudes all over the world. So what you did was worth your time. It says, am I sorry I found out? Hell no. I would have found out sooner or later, but the later I found out, the worse it would have been for me. Imagine not finding out about the STD for years. Yeah. Do I wish it were different? Every day. I wish Cheryl had been the woman I thought she was. Not only because I loved her, but because of the psychological damage she caused me and others. So, my tale is done. Thank you again to SSM and his listeners for all the support. That support made, made writing this worthwhile for me. SSM added the perspective that makes his post meaningful. Your comments showed that many of you learned something or helped confirm what you already knew. Unless Cheryl or her father, Jim or Roy or Bob, or some new lover shows up with a gun at my door, or something equally something equally exciting happens, this will be my last post. In case you're concerned, I have no intention of ever seeing Cheryl again. Good brother, let's keep it that way. Do not even talk to her. Text anything at all. As you get closer to the, the final days when you're going to finalize the divorce, I guarantee you she's going to reach out. She's going to probably show up at your door. Don't in any way talk to her. Every time, if you get a knock at your door, you make sure you find out who's there before you open that door. In fact, don't even, don't even respond to the knocking at your door. Look out the window. If you see the Amazon Prime vehicle, okay. But if you see a car you don't recognize, could be her. If I ever told uh, if I ever told either of my buddies that I was planning to see Cheryl, they show up my door with a weapon at my door. <laughs> Despite um, some non-serious wavering a couple of times, I knew Cheryl would be out of my life as soon as she as she told me she saw an interesting TV show about open marriages. I have not communicated directly with Cheryl since December twelfth, and never will again. The end. That is it for now, guys. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion we will hear an update in July after divorce is finalized. I, I really, In fact, I really would like to hear that part and that he's moving on and all that. But we've gotten part one and two was the story about how 
He met her, found out that she was cheating. The whole nine yards kicked her out. Part three and four was all about the stuff with what's been going from December up until now. Her dad trying to uh, get him to take her back, call her bullshit. And now we are parts uh, five and six. It's like Star Wars, episodes one through six. And part five and six, fighting about all the fucking details, all the shit that was going on for years about her, which we all strongly suspected. So, bro, like I said in other videos, take it one day at a time. And I really hope that that writing this out and having this shared with the world has helped you move on. You got guys all over the world that you'll never meet that have your back and are thinking about you and wishing you well, and, and including this one right here. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. I know this was very hard, really. About one day at a time. Hang out with your bros, your family, join a gym. If you're not, I think you mentioned you're going to a gym, so good. Minimize the alcohol and uh, junk food. Don't engage in that shit to feel better. One day at a time, focus on yourself, your career, make it something to yourself because success is the best revenge. Every day that you're moving forward in the right direction in life is one day you're giving a giant F you to her and all the other people that screwed you over here. And you will come out on top because she's now close to 30 years old. She is washed up. And uh, sadly, she will find another victim. It won't be hard for her. She's a master manipulator. She's Emperor Palpatine with tits. Okay, so she's going to find another victim. It won't be as easy as before because she's coming out of her prime. And hopefully by sharing videos like this, less guys can be susceptible to this bullshit. And more will have their uh, th th very good radar in case anything's going on. That's what I hope to accomplish by sharing these stories. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let this guy know what you think. Wish him well. Wish him luck in the divorce and all that. Tell him anything else you, you need to tell him. And, of course, if you want to hear things after the divorce is finalized, let him know in the comment section. And uh, hopefully I hear some good news about the divorce in July when things are official and, and she's done. And, of course, if a bus hits her tomorrow or, or who, something happens to her, I'd, I'd love to hear about that. In fact, it should be a one-page one email letting me know she got hit by a bus or run over by a UPS truck. I don't know what. Something happened to her. If you like the video, share with your friends and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.